Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on the channel. Today we are going to be doing something a little bit different. I don't usually do videos like this, but we're going to try it out because we are going to be talking about an absolute classic, a movie that if you say that you have not seen it, I will be absolutely shocked and just mortified that you have not experienced what I have experienced. And that is the Velocipaster. That is right. This is a movie about a pastor who gets cut by a dinosaur tooth and is given the powers to transform into a dinosaur because yeah and so we're going to be getting really deep into spoilers for this film and again this is the first type of video that i've done like this so let's see how it goes let's just jump right into this thing so we kick off this movie with doug jones not the doug jones you're thinking of no it's this doug jones this guy right here he's very happy he's walking out of his church he sees his mom and dad waving at their only son they're very happy to see each other across the street until all of a sudden the car explodes killing both the parents thus starting his tragic tragic backstory in this epic vfx fashion that is just something to behold and this begins one of the many trends of this movie that i absolutely love and that is the zooms if you are watching this movie and you want to play a drinking game you will be dead at the end of the movie if you drink every single time there's a zoom in or zoom out on somebody's face very dramatically and this begins his arc of traveling all the way to china which they make very clear that they're in china China. And while he is here, he sees this Asian woman running through the forest. She's panicky and she's being shot at by some other ninja character. And then she gets shot. She falls down in front of Doug Jones. And he, of course, you know, sees this, this, you know, dinosaur tooth that she has. And she gives it to him saying, you need to destroy this thing. You need to get rid of it. And he's like, he, of course, he doesn't understand the language. So he's like, you want me to have this? You want me to keep it safe for you? Which is the exact opposite of what she wants. But of course, he keeps it. And as he panics running away from the, the ninja, he cuts his hand on this dinosaur tooth and there's blood blood everywhere and this is of course the inciting incident so of course we need to have a dramatic zoom in a, a just wandering camera tilting up into the sky into the trees just completely completely aimlessly and of course Doug Jones is not the only character in this film we have a great ensemble of actors playing many different roles and of course we have an introduction to two great characters Carol and Frankie Mermaid now what's my name Frankie Mermaid and why is my name Frankie Mermaid Speak up, Carol! I'm gonna give you the fucking boot! Cause you're swimming in bitches! So Frankie Mermaid is a pimp, and of course, Carol is the prostitute, and of course, he is going to send her off to the park to do some trapping late at night, and she meets up with this guy, he's trying to attack her, it's going very, very badly, but who else is there other than our hero, Doug Jones, who is learning about his ability to turn into a dinosaur, he's freaking out in this woods, and he sees what's happening, he turns into a dinosaur, and this happens. <laughs> And now this is a part of the movie that I genuinely think is actually, I actually really enjoy. Unironically, I really like the relationship between Doug and Carol. I think it's a great way to start off the relationship with, you know, him waking up in the bed without any clothes, sees her walking in and thinks that this whole situation, like he's a priest, he's not supposed to sleep with anybody. Now he's put in a situation where he is so convinced that he slept with her last night. He's like, we cannot do this ever again and she's thinking about the whole dinosaur you know eating somebody situation she's like yeah no it was terrible it's it very weird it's a very awkward situation i almost peed myself and then he's just like he's freaking out obviously because it's such a weird and awkward situation and honestly it's a great way to endear you know the audience into this relationship and later on you get this really cheesy montage of them you know doing some murders with the dinosaur thing, you know, getting to know each other, teaching each other about the church, teaching each other about dinosaurs, and it's just a great little fun montage sequence. And honestly, one of my favorite jokes in this entire movie comes out of this relationship when they say this. Now, I don't, I don't know much about God. I don't know much about dinosaurs. Through this entire situation, you get a very strong, you know, moral conflict within Doug Jones of, you know, he's a priest, but at the same time, he wants to kill these bad people because there are a lot of bad people who go into the church and confess. So there's this balance. It's like Daredevil and like Punisher type conflict going in his mind where he is a strong believer in his faith, but also he can turn into a dinosaur and kill the people that are bad. 
And so what is he going to do? Is he going to do this thing? Is he not going to do this thing? Is he going to sleep with Carol's character? Is he going to you know, actually try to do this relationship? What is going to happen? Of course he's going to do it because it's the movie. And of course, since this is a movie, you need some antagonists. We can't just have Doug Jones and Carol going all vigilante, killing a bunch of random people in this town, confessing to him in the church. Although I think if the movie didn't go in that direction, it would have made more sense than, of course, you know, setting up these ninjas. <laughs> <laughs> And a character that I kind of skipped over for the first half of this movie is the fellow priest of this church that Doug Jones is, you know, a part of, and that is Father Stewart. And, you know, he is also trying to deal with Doug and this conflict that he has. He thinks that he can't be doing these things because, you know, it's a terrible thing to do. You can't go around killing these people. And after Doug confesses to him, he's like, okay, we need to go to this one guy who I swear he looks like he should be played by Nicolas Cage. You know, if this was a movie with a greater budget, I can see Nicolas Cage playing this character. But he goes to this exorcist character. They're going to get this dinosaur out of you. We're going to try to save you. But then randomly, we get this long extended sequence of a backstory for Father Stewart when he was in the war and his best friend and his like love interest both die brutal deaths and it's it's kind of never mentioned again it's just like we need to have backstory for this guys so we're going to spend a solid like six minutes really diving into this brutal and kind of tragic backstory for father stewart and why he's i don't i honestly don't know why but of course this exorcism does not work and doug freaks out and he rips the eye out of father stewart's face and then he runs off into the woods he's attacked by ninjas once again and then he finally consoles with carol and then they consummate they do the deed they fuck and throughout this entire sequence there's a great montage of just things happening and all of a sudden it starts montaging and flipping through the entire film so far so if you want to watch the movie up until this point you can start here and get a quick montage and you're caught up on all the events of the film because editing now of course if you've gotten this far into the movie and you're wondering where all the budgets went well it went to the design of the dinosaur itself of course you see that's more broad in the daylight later on in the film but also i think they spent a lot of production time planning and choreographing this random fight once they wake up in the morning these ninjas jump through the window and do a surprise attack and both carol and doug just are like great at fighting ninjas they they are great fighters they beat up and kill all these ninjas in this bedroom in this really well core <laughs> I can't even say it seriously. This fight sequence that happens in here that is just, it's great. The behind the scenes of this looks fun. Apparently they did a lot of take, or it looks like they did a lot of takes for this and they tried very hard and it looks like they just had a lot of fun making this sequence. So I give them props for this. Honestly, this part is really funny. And at this point in the movie, we need to find out more backstory in terms of the villains of this movie. So he cuts to the ninjas. They have kidnapped Father Stu and they're, you know, telling him all the motivations. And honestly, I was kind of dozing off at this part. I didn't really care about the motivations. All I need is ninjas attacking a dinosaur person. I don't need to know this this whole backstory and all the lore of this all i care about is they kill father stewart and it's very sad it's a very tragic ending to this character that we got such in-depth backstory for and of course we get some more laughing from from these these wonderful villainous characters <laughs> <laughs> And now we've reached the climax of the film, so of course Carol and Doug have to go and stop these ninjas, they have to go save Father Stewart, although I'm not sure if they ever found out that, that Stewart died, I don't think they ever asked or really cared about him after his death, so he doesn't really matter anymore, but of course they have to do a final confrontation with these ninjas, but we're not you know, done with this movie, there's a lot of story left to go, who are these ninjas, who is this one white guy in this group of ninjas, of course it turns out it is actually Doug's brother, and they make a whole point of saying that he was a single child in this whole like Spider-Man and you know ben parker talking in a car scene that looks like they're in heaven and this motivational thing like you need to use your powers for good type thing with great power comes great responsibility this entire sequence that they do earlier in the film and you find out that this other guy was just in the background of all these shots and the parents were just very neglectful for him and so this guy is now very jealous of this whole situation he's just the brother it's a twist it's fun they all fight there's a whole thing where where we think carol is dead she gets sliced up her entire body and she dies you see her die and then you know doug gets angry he turns into a dinosaur in this very, very dramatic way. I believe in a higher power, but praying right now will never save.
then we get some just great dinosaur violent action that we've been craving for ever since, you know, Jurassic World has sadly come to an end. This is the dinosaur action that we've always wanted. It's extremely violent. It's very bloody. There's a lot of prosthetic and mannequin heads and arms in this entire sequence. And of course, we end in a very, very bloody victory, followed by a comment of peace from Gandhi, because I don't, I don't know. And then we find out that Carol is fine. She, she really is fine. They need to make it clear that Carol is fine. And that is the end of the movie. That is the Velocipaster. That is the experience that I went through. I went to a friend's house and I watched this. And it was a lot of fun. And honestly, I do think a drinking game would be fun for this. I think a great way to, to celebrate this movie, to have fun with this movie is, yes, all the ridiculous zooms. Because there are so many zooms in this movie. It's a great time to drink. Or whenever the camera just decides to trail off. Or whenever there's a weird montage editing choice. I think that's another great, you know, drinking game choice. What are some of your drinking game, you know, ideas that you'd have for this movie? I'd like to hear it in the comment section down below. If you have seen this masterpiece and if you haven't seen it it is on tubi for free so i highly recommend you experience this thing for this halloween so what did you guys think of this style of video also i'm very curious to see if you want to see more videos like this from my channel so if you enjoyed comment down below subscribe to the channel to continue my 13 days of halloween series that i do every year on this channel of course i reviewed halloween ends more recently but of course terrifier 2 uh the new mike flanagan show the midnight club and a couple other things i've reviewed so far on the channel and so thanks everybody for watching this video and I hope to see you all in my next one.